Welcome back in Global Hoops official Gil McGregor here with Kyle Irving. The Olympic Games are quickly approaching and now Team USA is finalized. We know who's on the team. They recently announced their 12 man roster. If you don't know who's on the roster yet, we got you. Bam Adebayo, Bradley Bill, Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Jeremy Grant, Draymond Green, Drew Holiday, Zach Levine, Damian Lillard, Kevin Love, Chris Middleton, and Jason Tatum round out the roster. Kyle, when you first heard who was going to represent the United States in Tokyo, what were your first reactions? Were you surprised by any inclusions and surprised by anybody who didn't make the cut? I would say right off the bat, I was impressed with the amount of talent that they were able to get out there. Uh, I know that originally before James Harden had gotten hurt, the reports he was interested in going out there, Stephen Curry as well. Uh, Chris Paul was another name that got tossed around, but I wasn't sure what type of turnout they would actually get, especially after what we saw at the 2019 FIBA World Cup, which wasn't exactly the best roster that Team USA could have put forth. And that's how they ended up in seventh place in that tournament. But the deal is here that Damian Lillard and Kevin Durant are two players that are suiting up for Team USA. And those two players alone make me feel pretty confident about Team USA's chances of finishing with the gold medal in Tokyo this year. The thing that I will say, I was a little bit surprised about players like Jeremy Grant is one. Uh, Drew Holiday is another. And especially Kevin Love was somebody that I was a little bit surprised for, uh, about that made the roster. And I feel like with Kevin Love, he's someone that's played for Team USA before. So I understand that even though he's getting up there in age, he's kind of a, um, a constant for this team that will keep the heartbeat going. And then Drew Holiday adds a defensive presence, as does Jeremy Grant. But those are just two names that, and I'm not saying they're not deserving. I just didn't necessarily see that coming from Team USA. So I would say all in all, the roster looks pretty good. And the United States should feel good about the roster they're putting forth in Tokyo. But there were a couple surprises on my end. How about you? Yeah, it's funny. You talk about Jeremy Grant and Kevin Love as well. You know, Kevin Love was on the 2012 team, I believe, in, in London and won gold there. Jeremy Grant, and I won't pretend to be like this FIBA expert, but the more I thought about it, it does feel like he might fit that FIBA mold. You know, a, a guy who can play small ball five because of that, his athleticism, uh, his ability to make plays on the boards. He can shoot the ball pretty well. He can be aggressive offensively and be a glue type guy. Um, that it, it did surprise me initially, but then I thought about it. And it feels like, you know, the majority of these teams usually have a guy kind of like that who ends up making the cut. I know Andre Godala, who was on the team, uh, the 2012 team in London. And then obviously Andre Godala is a finals MVP and I'm not comparing him necessarily to Jeremy Grant, but it's definitely that kind of role. And, and, and I think, you know, the, the, when constructing the roster, you mentioned 2019 and that seventh place finish is, is very unacceptable for USA basketball. And I think they looked at what went wrong and tried to right those wrongs. And, and one thing that stands out big time is Bam Adebayo didn't make that last roster. I think he uh, had it on his mind and he emerged into an all-star. And now he's you know, one of the, the, the best young big men in the NBA. So, so to see him included was a pleasant surprise because I didn't think he'd be petty about representing for his country, but it's good to see that he, has you know taken that leap and he's going to go out there especially after playing all the way to the nba finals they were there the heat were eliminated early uh, in the postseason but still he hasn't had that much time to rest so to know he's going out there to play as well and then jason tatum surprised me just a little bit i know he had some ups and downs dealt with covid last season um and, and then another early exit for them but uh good to know that he will be there because he is you know, along with Kevin Durant and, and Damian Lillard, I think are the three guys this team is going to lean on in the Olympics. That being said, Greg Popovich is one of the greatest coaches of all time, but he's going to have some tough decisions to make when you look at this roster and how it shakes out. Who's your starting five? Who, who are the guys you want to start the game for Team USA when the Olympics get underway? It's, I mean, picking from the pick of the litter, and it's not going to be an easy decision for head coach, head coach Greg Popovich. But I personally feel like when I saw this roster and started mapping out the starting five in my head, even though it's going to provide a lot of offense, which isn't necessarily an issue, um, I thought that Damian Lillard and Bradley Beal would make up the backcourt. I thought Jason Tatum and Kevin Durant would make up the two forward spots. And at center, while Bam Adebayo would probably make a lot of sense just in terms of size, I think Draymond Green is the one that fills out the five spot just because of his versatility. Uh, th that lineup could need a distributor and Draymond Green could be that distributor basically playing point center and making sure that Tatum and Beal and Lillard and Kevin Durant, and it's unbelievable to even think about those four players surrounded by Draymond Green getting buckets for Team USA. Uh, but to me, I felt like that 
was the starting lineup that made the most sense to me where, you know, maybe if they play a team that's a little bit bigger, they go with Bam Adebayo in the front court. But I mean, as we've seen before, Draymond Green, defensive player of the year, can hold his own, hold his own against just about anybody. Well, that takes the fun out of it because I had the exact same five as you, but to <laughs> of course. go for it, go for a little bit of differentiation, you know, taking a look at potentially maybe having Drew Holiday or Devin Booker start in the backcourt alongside Damian Lillard just to have a little more, uh, if it's Drew Holiday, have a little more of that defensive presence. And then Devin Booker, maybe he's just riding the momentum of this postseason run uh, that he's having with the Phoenix Suns, God, we had, uh, 47 in the, in the closeout game against the Lakers. So um, those are some other options. I think it's a good problem to have, uh, to have all that talent. And then Kevin Love as well could uh, be a stretch five if you want more shooting. And if this is a guy who's, you know, in his 30s, not coming over to come off the bench. So got a lot of options. I don't think it can go wrong either way. There's no doubt this team is extremely talented and, again, much better than that team in 2019. I'm going to reference uh, the great Larry Bird who won gold with the United States in 1992. There's a legend that when he was in the three-point contest, he walked in the locker room and said, who's finishing second? I ask, is that the deal with Team USA? Do you think it's a foregone conclusion that this team brings home the gold? Or, um, and there are some teams that have yet to qualify for the Olympics yet, but do you see any countries out there? Um, Spain won gold. Uh, they won the championship at, at the FIBA World. So uh, there's some other NBA talent from other countries. It's a global game. Uh, do you think there is a specific country that's going to make the United States sweat a little bit? Or do you think that it might be uh, smooth sailing to the gold medal? Four straight gold medal at that, excuse me. I, I got to be honest with you. I don't see how any other country beats this team that Team USA is putting forth. It's the, the roster through and through. It just has unstoppable uh, outlets of offense. I mean, they're just players that anybody that steps on the floor can go for 30 on any given night. And we've seen that with players like Bill Lillard, Tatum, Kevin Durant, Zach Levine, and the list goes on and on. Um, so to answer your question or answer Larry Bird's question, I really do feel like it is a case of who is finishing second. And I think added to that, just the fact that they had such a poor showing as a team at the FIBA World Cup in 2019, finishing in seventh place. It almost adds a chip on their shoulder. Like, hey, we can't just walk in here and win gold with our eyes closed. We're going to have to put forth a, a good lineup and we're going to have to put forth our best effort in order to make that happen. But as for teams that have a chance to, you know, maybe knock off Team USA, I think you already hit the nail on the head with Spain, the team that won that FIBA World Cup. Argentina, the team they lost to in the championship round, I think is another team that has some NBA talent like we've seen with players like Facundo Campazzo and Gabriel Deck, who made his way over to the Oklahoma City Thunder by the end of the year. Plus, they still have Luis Scola kicking it, and he, he proved that he still has something in the tank in that FIBA World Cup. Um, but other than that, I think a team to look out for that's in the qualifying tournament or two teams to look out for in the qualifying tournament, one being Team Canada, who we covered very closely with players like RJ Barrett, Andrew Wiggins, Nikhil Alexander-Walker, Dwight Powell is an inside presence that's intimidating. And also Lith Lithuania is another team that comes to mind for me, who has DeMontis Sabonis and Jonas Valanciunas, who can give any front court in the entire world fits if they're lining up next to each other. So while I think that Team USA, it's their medal to lose, I do think there are other countries that will give them everything they have and, and make sure that they bring their A game if they're going to take home the gold medal. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be fun to see how it plays out. Uh, you know, these teams that are fighting to qualify, uh, it's crazy. You know, the NBA Finals are set to end uh, in late July, and the Olympics opening ceremonies are July 23rd, and the basketball starts on July 24th. People say basketball never stops, and this year it really doesn't. Keep it locked in with us here on Global Hoops Official and over on NBA.com. We've got you covered with everything, NBA playoffs, NBA Finals, and when the Olympics roll rolling around, we got you covered with that as well. Continue to subscribe, like these videos, and keep it locked in with us here on Global Hoops Official as well as NBA.com. We've got you covered with everything basketball, everything NBA. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Gil McGregor for Kyle Levering. We'll catch you next time.